The 7 Steps to Finding Your Financial Fast Track In Step 1, you need to mind your own business. Gather together your financial data, including your income, your expenses, your assets, and your liabilities. Get organized using a computer spreadsheet or just a simple piece of paper. By looking at your financial data, you can easily begin to see how you've been programmed from an early age to mind everyone else's business and ignore your own. Remember, your liabilities are your banker's business, while your assets are yours. In order to get where you want to go, you need to know where you are. This is the first step to take control of your life and spend more time minding your own business. Next, set financial goals. Set a long-term financial goal for where you want to be in five years and a smaller, short-term financial goal for where you want to be in 12 months. The smaller goal is a stepping stone along the way to your five-year goal. Be sure your goals are realistic and attainable. For instance, try to cut your debt by a specific amount while increasing your cash flow from assets or passive income. When you establish your five-year financial goals, do the same thing but take the long view. Now that you know where you are financially today and have set your goals, you need to get control of your cash flow so that you can achieve your goals. Step 2. Take control of your cash flow. After deciding to mind your own business, the next step as the CEO of the business of your life is to take control of your cash flow. The primary reason most people have money problems is that they were never schooled in the science of cash flow management. People work very hard, thinking that more money will solve their financial problems. But as my rich dad often said, more money will not solve the problem if cash flow management is the problem. When you review your financial statements, determine which quadrant of the cash flow quadrant you receive your income from today. Then, determine which quadrant you want to receive the bulk of your income from in five years. At this point, you can begin establishing your cash flow management plan. Here are some rules. Pay yourself first. Put aside a set percentage from each paycheck or each payment you receive from other sources. Deposit that money into an investment savings account. Once your money goes into the account, never take it out until you are ready to invest it. Also, focus on reducing your personal debt. If you have credit cards with outstanding balances, cut up all your credit cards except for one or two. Any new charges you add to the one or two cards you now have must be paid off every month. Do not incur any further long-term debt. Then come up with $150 to $200 extra per month. Now that you're becoming more and more financially literate, this should be relatively easy to do. If you cannot generate an additional $150 to $200 per month, then your chances for financial freedom may only be a pipe dream. You will now pay the minimum plus the $150 to $200 on that one credit card. Pay only the minimum amount due on all other credit cards. Once the first card is paid off, then apply the total amount you are paying each month on that card to your next credit card. You are now paying the minimum amount due on the second card plus the total monthly payment you are paying on your first credit card. Continue this process with all your credit cards and other consumer credit, such as store charges, etc. With each debt you pay off, apply the full amount you are paying on that debt to the minimum payment of your next debt. As you pay off each debt, the monthly amount you are now paying on the next debt will escalate. Once all your credit cards and other consumer debt is paid off, continue the procedure with your car and house payments. If you follow this procedure, you will be amazed at the shortened amount of time it takes for you to be completely debt-free. Most people can be debt-free within five to seven years. Now that you are completely debt-free, take the monthly amount you are paying on your last debt and put that money towards investments. Build your asset column. That's how simple it is. Step three. Know the difference between risk and risky. I often hear people saying investing is risky. I disagree. Instead, I say being uneducated is risky. To my rich dad, to spend your life working hard for money only to have it go out as fast as it comes in is not a sign of high intelligence. Due to the lack of financial intelligence, many educated people will put themselves into positions of high financial risk. My rich dad called it financial redline, meaning income and expenses are nearly the same every month. These are the people who cling desperately to job security, are unable to change when the economy changes, and often destroy their health with stress and worry. And these are often the same people who say, business and investing is risky. In my opinion, business and investing is not risky. Being undereducated is. Similarly, being misinformed is risky, and relying on a safe, secure job is the highest risk anyone can take. Buying an asset is not risky. Buying liabilities you have been told are assets is risky. Minding your own business is not risky. 
minding everyone else's business and paying them first is risky.